Hey everyone, it's Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. Thank you so much for joining us. In this video, I just want to walk through an article written by Josh Hill in The Driven titled Neo completes 60 million EV battery swaps in China. These are the key points from the article. Neo has surpassed 60 million EV battery swaps in China just four months after reaching 50 million swaps. Neo operates 2,802 battery swap stations in China with the network continually expanding. Neo completed its first battery swap station in Shenzhen in May 2018 after achieving its first million swaps in 29 months with subsequent milestones accelerating. Uh, NEO has 59 power swap stations in Europe across five countries, Norway, Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden and Denmark, along with 26 charging stations and access to 600 thousand third-party chargers. Neo opened its first Neo House showroom in Abu Dhabi uh, at the uh, in the United Arab Emirates in November 2024, planning its first battery swap station in the region by late 2025. So let's go through that uh, point by point. So 60 million EV battery swaps in China, that's a huge number after four months uh, reaching 50 million swaps. So they are certainly accelerating in growth. 2,802 battery swap stations in China. Just let that sink in for a minute there. That is a huge number of stations. In Australia, we just surpassed 1,000 charging stations across our entire country. And this is Neo. This is one company, one of the smaller players actually in China, uh, albeit at the uh, premium segment, 2,802 battery swap stations across China. And that's just battery swap stations. They've got charging stations as well. Uh, Neo completed its first battery swap station in Shenzhen in southern China in May 2018, so only six years ago. And then the first million swaps happened in 29 months and obviously uh, growing exponentially from there. Also in Europe now, so five countries, uh, Norway, Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden and Denmark, and also charging stations as well. So that's really good to hear. Um, so 600,000, well, they've got access to 600,000 third-party chargers and they're expanding to the Middle East, so Abu Dhabi in the UAE by, uh, well, they opened in November 2024, so you would hope they're expanding in that region as well. So, you know, the question remains, why not Australia? Why isn't Neo in Australia yet, right? We've had other brands come into the country, of course, with BYD, Xpeng, Zika, Depow, uh, Leap Motor, Cherry, the list goes on and on. Why not Neo? I think maybe Neo is waiting for these brands to take hold a bit more, establish Chinese brands as you know um, acceptable in this country before maybe bringing their cars. Because as I said before, Neo is kind of more in that luxury premium segment compared to the other brands. So I'd be very keen to see battery swap stations in this country, right? Obviously, one of the big drawbacks or one of the, the barriers to adoption of EVs is the amount of time it takes to charge an EV. Obviously, there are different uh, levels of charging, different speeds. Uh, at the top end in Australia currently, if you have an 800 volt battery uh, architecture, you can potentially charge a car from 10 to, or 20% to 80% in about, say, 18 to 20 minutes. And that is real time. I've done those tests before. Anything with an 800 volt battery, we're talking like the eGMP cars, the Korean cars, you know, we've got uh, uh, Hyundai, we've got uh, Kia, we've got Genesis, uh, and now we've got Xpeng entering the country as well with that 800 volt uh, architecture batteries. So 18 to 20 minutes is about what you can expect for those cars. If you've got a 400 volt battery, half an hour is kind of what you can expect for that similar, similar amount of charge from 20 to 80% uh, in about that time. Obviously, if you're charging at home, it's a bit slower. With either a seven or 11 kilowatt charger, you're looking more like four to eight hours, depending. Uh, and also, if you've got a, you know, a uh, just a slower charger that goes in straight into any power point, then you're looking more like maybe 24 hours worth of charging from say 10 to 20% to 80%. So they're kind of the timeframes at the moment for EVs. And obviously, if you're coming from a petrol powertrain, then, you know, you would think, wow, that's actually quite slow. But don't forget, you can actually charge at home overnight. So all that time is actually sort of taken care of. You know, you're not actually noticing the time passing. You wake up with a pretty good battery state of charge. Uh, or you can time your charge uh, with, say, you know, eating or drinking on the highway, taking a rest stop, comfort stop. So you can time those charges. And again, that 20 to 30 minutes can be negated from that point of view. But imagine if you could swap a battery in say five to 10 minutes or even less time than that. We've we've heard that Neo can do these swaps in five minutes or less. So suddenly you've got a uh, EV that can charge or battery swap uh, in the same amount of time it takes to fill up a tank of petrol. 
So, you know, I'm curious to see, and I'll monitor how NEO does in Abu Dhabi, uh, watch them how they're doing in Europe, and hopefully NEO brings this infrastructure to Australia with their cars, because that would be really useful for uh, countries like Australia with a big landmass, currently lots of kilometers in between charging stops, and that's certainly very daunting for a lot of people, but if you've got battery stop stations along our major arterials, suddenly you don't have to stop as long and you can drive off uh, after say five to 10 minutes, which would be quite handy, of course. I guess the downside to this is that it requires a little bit of infrastructure compared to say, uh, just plonking a, uh, a fast charger on the side of the highway. You actually need to install a station like this where you have to swap the battery out. And I think a lot of the time it's automated as well. So it can be done rather quickly. And I guess it also brings into light um, how we see EVs, right, or how we see cars in general, if this becomes mainstream, do we need to buy a full car anymore? Like, are we suddenly just paying for the shell of a vehicle, right, where it's just, uh, it's a house basically for the battery, where you don't suddenly own the battery, you just own the vehicle and you sort of lease the battery uh, over time. And also it opens up different subscription models too, where you can subscribe to a model where, you know, say if you are only driving in the city uh, and you can charge at home, then okay, so you pay for a bit more for the battery because you own the battery or you use the battery most of the time. If you do a lot of long distance driving and you need to swap the batteries out quite frequently, then you might pay for a plan where it's a smaller flag for or a cheaper flag for, and then you pay more for each battery swap. So I think it lends itself to different subscription and pricing models, depending how you use your EV. And then all this talk about degradation and cycle life and longevity of the battery. Well, if you are, you know, if you're swapping the battery out all the time and the company owns these batteries rather than yourself, and you're just paying for the usage and obviously the energy that you swap out and into, you don't have to worry too much about the life of the battery or the degradation because you basically swap the battery out each time and the company could guarantee the health of the battery at least and say, look, the health of the battery is 90% of its original state. So we'll give you an equivalent or at least guarantee you that it's gonna be at least 90% of the battery's health. So yes, there may be some degradation still, but at least Neo could guarantee that you won't get a worse battery than what you've already got. So there are certainly models around uh, situations like that to account for uh, life of the battery and degradation and so on. So again, congratulations to Neo for hitting this milestone of 60 million EV battery swaps in China. Huge achievement, and uh, I'm sure they will certainly grow and expand worldwide as well. And fingers crossed, they'll come to Australia too over time, uh, and we'll start to see uh, Neo and their battery swap stations in Australia. And again, having lots of batteries in a charging station, for example, uh, on our highways in Australia, they could actually act as a little mini uh, power bank or battery storage uh, for the grid, uh, where it could help stabilize the grid during uh, sort of peak periods. Um, when they're not being used in EVs. And so another model that uh, NEO and our governments here could consider moving forward for the future of energy security and storage in Australia. All right, well, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'm Tom from Ludicrous Feed. Thanks again to Josh from The Driven for this article. Until next time, happy charging.